say you wanted a computer to read a biology textbook and then take an advanced biology exam. We asked it about 20 questions and it got 19 right. The regulatory thing can become a bottleneck. So, you know, if you're discovering drugs in six months, but it takes five years to get approval. We went from expensive computing to free computing. Uh, essentially. And, and what we're engaged in now is going from intelligence about tough problems is very scarce. Uh, and over the next decade, intelligence of all types, uh, including physical robotic uh, capabilities, will essentially be free. And it's hard to overstate how profound that is in terms of what it, what it changes. Uh, you know, I was excited by AI my whole life. Uh, Shaky the Robot, you know, came out when I was uh, a student, and so I thought, okay, how do we program this thing? And how do you, how do you take language? Um, you know, say you wanted a computer to read a biology textbook and then take an advanced biology exam in the U.S. There's one called the Advanced Placement AP exam. Uh, what data structures would you create in order to encode the knowledge in that book to allow you to beat any student uh, who reads that book? And you know that remained an unsolved problem really until GPT-4 came along. And that was my challenge to my friends at OpenAI was, uh, hey, I'm working on malaria and TB. Uh, if you guys can pass the AP exam, come and tell me and then you'll have something interesting. And I thought they'd give me a few years, but uh, that challenge was uh, about, uh, about three years ago. And within uh, eight months, uh, they showed me something that was so impressive. The night I saw it, we asked it about 20 questions and it got 19 right. How should we shape AI to make sure we have a fairer, more inclusive society? How do you help lower income countries uh, you know, level up somewhat? You know, the three scenarios that the foundation is prioritizing, uh, you know, AI for health, uh, AI for education, and AI for agriculture, uh, which in the, the lower income countries still super important, mm -hmm. uh, particularly faced with uh, climate change challenges that we help uh, these farmers um, deal with the weather and uh, all of the challenges that they'll face. Basically, the almost any current problem um, that we have, AI will provide solutions for. And so, you know, mental health, we're not very good at that. But AI uh, will change. It'll create a capacity to help out with that that's uh, very, very dramatic change. Um, you know, most people in Africa never get to meet a real doctor. They're born, they die, no doctor involved ever. Uh, and yet, you know, we will give them, uh, even with the feature phone, in their local dialect, something that over the course of their life knows their entire medical history uh, and is up to date about every tool and every resource that's available. And the actual cost of that computation, that intelligence, will be very, very small. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of a wild thing. Access to a good doctor has been just a rich country thing. Access to a tutor who understands what you're confused about, how to motivate you, you know, it's a very privileged thing. I happen to have a lot of very good teachers uh, so that I was willing to persevere. Uh, and, you know, now that information is, that is going to be something available to everyone. Well, that's a very good question. So the, um, the biggest advance in the AI is in this um, chemical shape, protein shape uh, idea. And, you know, where are these drug pockets? Which small molecules can affect which receptors? And, you know, that's this fascinating problem. It may take us another five years, uh, maybe even 10 to do that. But... You raised the question of regulatory. The um, 
the regulatory thing can become a bottleneck. So, you know, if you're discovering drugs in six months, but it takes five years to get approval, you you can't uh, you know make that kind of dramatic change. So the question is, how do we get these AI systems into the regulator? Uh, and you know, we are we are funding AI projects uh, for drug safety, uh, and we're doing that uh, you know funded by Gates Foundation and the the U.S. government, and so that the um, regulatory process can also uh, proceed at the speed of AI. So, you know, the people who work on things like longevity or gene editing, wow, they are really accelerated uh, by using these AI models. Inside my country, the degree of political polarization is at an all-time high. You know, we're richer than we've ever been, and yet our sort of ability to say, wow, this is fantastic, we're so lucky, uh, you know, like, do we think our government's doing a good job? Well, we're a democracy, we elect these people, and 8% of us think they're doing a good job. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, a contradiction. You know, there are countries like China where people, you know, at least there, 70% of the people think the government's doing a good job, and they didn't, they didn't pick those people, basically. So, uh, you know, the mystery of how we're going uh, to cooperate and get along and avoid uh, nuclear war, avoid, uh, you know, uh, large-scale terrorism, and manage to shape the AI uh, to be, uh, you know, good, good for humanity, um, it's it's a very it's a big challenge. Uh, Harari writes about how, you know, he thinks we ought to get more enlightened, maybe meditate a lot more, uh, before we should open the Pandora's box of AI. Uh, he's got a good point, but you know, it's it's it it's going to happen, and we're not going to hesitate. And so, uh, the the way of shaping it uh, for for mutual benefit is I, somewhat hangs in the balance, I'd say.